What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be explaining to you exactly what the payment card industry data security standard is. So let's get into it. In an era where digital transactions are ubiquitous, securing payment card data is of paramount importance. And the payment card industry data security standard, also known as PCI DSS, this is a critical framework designed to protect cardholder information and ensure secure transactions. And in this video, we're going to talk about the concepts of PCI DSS, explain what it is, its history, key requirements, the compliance process, benefits, challenges, and its impact on business businesses. All right. So exactly what is PCI DSS? So the payment card industry data security standard, this is a set of security standards designed to ensure that all companies that accept process store or transmit credit card information maintain a secure environment. And the PCI DSS, this was established by the payment card industry security standards council, which was founded by major credit card companies, including Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover, and JCB. And here are the key characteristics of PCI DSS. So you have a comprehensive security framework. So PCI DSS, this covers a wide range of security practices and controls to protect card holder data. You have global applicability. So PCI DSS is applicable to any organization, regardless of size or location that handles payment card data. And then you have mandatory compliance. So compliance with PCI DSS, this is required for all entities that accept credit card payments. All right, so let's quickly talk about the history of PCI DSS. So the development of PCI DSS, this was driven by the need to combat increasing incidents of credit card fraud and data breaches. And here are some key milestones in the history of PCI DSS. So we got the early 2000s, and this saw a significant increase in credit card fraud and data breaches, prompting major credit card companies to develop their own security programs. Then came the year 2004, and this is when Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover, and J. CB collaborated to create a unified standard known as the PCI DSS, and this consolidated the various security requirements of each card brand into a single framework. Then moving on to 2006, the Payment Card Industry Security Standards Council was established to manage and oversee the development of PCI DSS and the PCI SSC. They are responsible for maintaining, evolving, and promoting the PCI DSS. And then we have ongoing updates. So PCI PCI DSS is regularly updated to address emerging security threats and technological advancements. And the standard has undergone several revisions with the latest revision at the time of this recording being PCI DSS 3.2.1, which was released in May 2018. All right, so now that we got that established, let's go over some key requirements of PCI DSS. So PCI DSS, this comprises of 12 requirements that are organized into six control objectives. And these requirements are designed to establish and maintain a secure environment for payment card data. So here are the 12 key requirements of PCI DSS. First one is building and maintaining a secure network and system. So the first requirement is you want to install and maintain firewall configurations to protect cardholder data. Requirement two is you do not use vendor supply defaults for system passwords or other security parameters. Then we move on to protecting cardholder data. And within that, we have requirement three, which simply states you have to protect stored cardholder data. And then there's requirement four, which is you need to encrypt transmissions of cardholder data across open public networks. Next category is maintaining a vulnerability management program. So requirement number five states you need to protect all systems against malware and regularly update antivirus software or programs. Requirement six is you need to develop and maintain secure systems and applications. Then that leads us to implementing strong access control measures. And then we have requirement seven, which states you need to restrict access to cardholder data by businesses unless it's on the need to know. You got requirement eight. You need to identify and authenticate access the system components. Requirement nine states you need to restrict physical access to cardholder data. Next, that brings us to regularly monitoring and testing networks. So requirement 10 states you need to track and monitor all access to network resources and cardholder data. Requirement 11 states regularly test security systems and processes. And then that brings us to our final requirement of maintaining an information security policy and requirement 12 states maintaining a policy that addresses information security for all persons. Now. 
All right, so let's move on and talk about the compliance process for PCI DSS. So achieving and maintaining PCI DSS compliance, this involves several steps from understanding the requirements to undergoing regular assessments. So here's an overview of the PCI DSS compliance process. So first you need to determine the scope. So you wanna identify the scope of your PCI DSS assessment by determining which systems and processes handle customer data. And this involves mapping data flows and identifying all locations where cardholder data is stored, processed, or transmitted. Next, you want to assess your current security posture. So you want to conduct a gap analysis to assess your current security posture against PCI DSS requirements. And you want to identify any gaps or deficiencies that need to be addressed to achieve compliance. So after that, you want to implement security controls. So you want to implement the necessary security controls and measures to address the identified gaps. And this may involve updating systems, configuring firewalls, encrypting data, and enhancing access controls. After that, you want to conduct a self-assessment or audit. So depending on your organization size and the volume of transactions process, you may need to conduct a self-assessment or undergo an external audit by a qualified security assessor. A self-assessment, this involves completing a self self-assessment questionnaire and an attestation of compliance. Next, you want to remediate any issues. So you need to address any issues or non-compliant areas that are identified during the assessment. And then you want to implement corrective actions to remediate vulnerabilities and ensure compliance with all PCI DSS requirements. Then you want to submit compliance reports. So you want to submit the required compliance documentation to your acquiring bank or payment processor. And this typically includes the SAQ or report on compliance, the AOC, and any other supporting documentation. And then after you do all of that, you want to maintain ongoing compliance. So PCI DSS compliance is not a one-time event. It requires continuous monitoring, regular testing, and ongoing maintenance of security controls to ensure continued compliance. And this includes conducting annual assessments, quarterly vulnerability scans, and periodic reviews of security policies and procedures. All right, so let's move on and talk about the benefits of PCI DSS compliance. So achieving PCI DSS compliance, this offers several benefits for organizations, including the following. And the first benefit is that of enhanced security. So PCI DSS compliance, this helps organizations implement robust security controls to protect cardholder data from breaches and cyber attacks. Then there's reduced risk of data breaches. So by adhering to PCI DSS requirements, organizations, they can reduce the risk of data breaches and minimize the impact of potential security incidents. Another benefit is that of increased customer trust. So demonstrating compliance with PCI DSS, this can enhance customer trust and confidence in your organization's ability to protect their payment card information. You have regulatory compliance. So PCI DSS compliance, this helps organizations meet regulatory requirements and avoid legal penalties related to data protection and privacy. Another benefit is that it offers a competitive advantage. So organizations that achieve PCI DSS compliance can differentiate themselves from competitors by showcasing their commitment to security and data protection. And then there is the avoidance of fines and penalties. So non-compliance with PCI DSS, this can result in significant fines and penalties from credit card companies and acquiring banks. So compliance, this helps avoid these financial consequences. All right, so let's move on and talk about some of the challenges of PCI DSS compliance. So while PCI DSS compliance offers numerous benefits, it also presents several challenges for organizations. And the first one is that it is resource intensive. So achieving and maintaining PCI DSS compliance, this can be resource intensive, requiring significant investments in technology, personnel, and processes. Then there's the complexity of requirements. So the 12 requirements of PCI DSS are comprehensive comprehensive and detailed, making it challenging for organizations to interpret and implement them correctly. Then there's the evolving threat landscape. So the constantly evolving threat landscape, this requires organizations to stay vigilant and continuously update their security measures to address new vulnerabilities and threats. Then there's third party risk management. So ensuring that third party vendors and service providers comply with PCI DSS, this adds another layer of complexity. So organizations, they must carefully vet and manage their relationships with third parties. And then there's maintaining continuous compliance. So PCI DSS compliance is an ongoing process that requires continuous monitoring, regular assessments, and timely remediation of identified issues.
All right, so moving on, let's talk about future trends in PCI DSS. So as technology and the payment landscape continues to evolve, PCI DSS will also adapt to address new challenges and opportunities. And here are some future trends in PCI DSS. So the first is that of integration with emerging technologies. So PCI DSS will continue to evolve to address the security implications of emerging technologies such as mobile payments, blockchain, and artificial intelligence. Then there is a focus on cybersecurity. So with the increasing frequency and sophistication of cyber attacks, PCI DSS will place a greater emphasis on advanced cybersecurity measures, including threat intelligence, incident response, and resilience. Another trend is that of enhanced data protection. So PCI DSS will likely incorporate more stringent requirements for data protection, including encryption, tokenization, and anonymization of cardholder data. Then there's global harmonization. So as data protection regulations become more harmonized globally, PCI DSS will align with other international standards and frameworks to provide a unified approach to data security. And then we have simplification for small businesses. So recognizing the challenges faced by small businesses, future updates to PCI DSS may include simplified requirements and guidance to help smaller organizations achieve compliance more easily. All right, so next let's talk about some best practices for achieving PCI DSS compliance. So to successfully achieve and maintain PCI DSS compliance, organizations, they should follow these best practices. So first is you need to understand the requirements. So you wanna familiarize yourself with the 12 PCI DSS requirements and their associated controls. And you wanna ensure that your team understands the importance of each requirement and how it applies to your organization. Do you wanna conduct a risk assessment? Do you wanna perform a comprehensive risk assessment to identify potential vulnerabilities and threats to cardholder data. You want to use the results to prioritize security measures and allocate resources effectively. Next, you want to implement strong access controls. So you want to restrict access to cardholder data based on the principle of least privilege. You want to implement strong authentication mechanisms and regularly review access permissions. And you want to regularly monitor and test your network. So you want to continuously monitor network activity for suspicious behavior and conduct regular vulnerability scans and penetration tests. You want to ensure that logs are maintained and reviewed to detect and respond to security incidents promptly. Next, you want to encrypt card holder data. So you want to use strong encryption methods to protect cardholder data, both in transit and at rest. Do you want to ensure that encryption keys are managed securely and regularly updated? Do you want to develop and maintain security policies? So you want to create comprehensive security policies that outline procedures for protecting cardholder data. Do you want to ensure that these policies are reviewed regularly, updated and communicated to all employees. Next, you want to train your employees. So you want to provide ongoing training to employees about PCI DSS requirements, data protection best practices, and the importance of safeguarding cardholder data. And then you want to ensure that employees understand their roles and responsibilities in maintaining compliance. You also want to conduct regular self-assessments. So regularly conducting self-assessments using the self-assessment questionnaire or the SAQ to evaluate your compliance status. And then you want to identify areas for improvement and implement corrective actions as needed. Another best practice is engaging with qualified security assessors. So for more complex environments, you want to engage QSAs to perform thorough assessments and provide expert guidance on achieving and maintaining PCI DSS compliance. Do you want to implement incident response plans? So you want to develop and test incident response plans to ensure a swift and effective response to data breaches and security incidents. Do you want to regularly update these plans based on lessons learned from incidents and evolving threats. Next, you want to ensure vendor compliance. So you want to ensure that all third party vendors and service providers who handle cardholder data on your behalf are PCI DSS compliant. And this includes data protection requirements and contracts and regularly reviewing their compliance status. And then you want to document and maintain evidence. So you want to keep detailed records of all compliance efforts, including policies, procedures, logs, and assessment reports, because this documentation is crucial for demonstrating compliance during audits and assessments.
All right, so moving on, let's talk about some case studies of PCI DSS compliance. So examining successful implementations of PCI DSS compliance, this can provide valuable insights and best practices. So here are a few notable case studies. So we have the retail chain, a large retail chain they implemented PCI DSS compliance across its numerous stores by standardizing security practices and centralizing data management. And the company conducted regular training for employees and used automated tools for continuous monitoring and vulnerability management. And as a result, the retail chain significantly reduced the risk of data breaches and improved customer trust. Next, we have an e-commerce platform. So an e-commerce platform, they achieve PCI DSS compliance by leveraging cloud-based security solutions and encryption technologies to protect cardholder data. And the platform regularly engaged QSAs for comprehensive assessments and maintain strict access controls and logging mechanisms. And compliance with PCI DSS has helped the platform enhance its security posture and attract more customers. And then we have financial service providers. So a financial services provider, they integrated PCI DSS requirements into its overall cybersecurity framework, aligning its policies and procedures with best practices for data protection. And the provider implemented robust incident response plans and conducted regular penetration tests to identify and mitigate vulnerabilities. And compliance with PCI DSS, this enabled the provider to enhance its reputation and meet regulatory requirements. All right, so to wrap all of this wonderful information up, the Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard, or PCI DSS, this is a vital framework for ensuring the security of payment card data and protecting against data breaches and fraud. By adhering to PCI DSS requirements, organizations that can safeguard cardholder information, enhance customer trust, and avoid significant fines and penalties. Now, understanding the key requirements, compliance process, and best practices for PCI DSS, this is essential for organizations that handle payment card data. So while achieving and maintaining compliance can be challenging, the benefits of enhanced security, reduced risk, and regulatory compliance make it a worthwhile investment. So as technology in the threat landscape continues to evolve, PCI DSS will adapt to address new challenges and opportunities. And organizations, they must stay informed about updates to the standard and continuously improve their security practices to remain compliant and protect sensitive data. So whether you are a small business owner, an IT professional, or a large enterprise, embracing PCI DSS compliance is crucial for ensuring the security of payment card transactions and maintaining a strong reputation in the digital economy. By implementing robust security measures and fostering a culture of data protection, organizations can navigate the complexities of PCI DSS and thrive in an increasingly interconnected world.